Now that you've learned the basics of dealing with cloud-based storage accounts and virtual machines, it's time to put that knowledge to work. In this exercise, you'll create a storage account with a unique name. You'll create a virtual machine from a virtual machine template using the defined storage account. You'll upgrade the virtual machine to a larger virtual machine size. At this point, you can pause the video and perform the exercise. Once you're finished, resume this video and see how I would do it. As you log into your Windows Azure portal, you'll notice a list called All Items. We're going to navigate from that list over to the Storage Account section, and we'll go ahead and we'll create a new storage account. We'll do that by clicking on New on the bottom left-hand corner, ensuring that storage is highlighted, and then clicking on Quick Create. We need to specify a unique URL. And here I'm going to choose a Dialonix East, since I am saving this in the Eastern US as the location or affinity group. I'm also going to choose to keep the replication zone as geo-redundant, and I'll go ahead and click on Create Storage Account. The storage account will take a, a second to create. As soon as it's created, we'll be able to enter the storage account and we'll be browsing the account basically like a cloud-based file share. Not that it's shared at this point, but in terms of a cloud-based analogy, that's what it'll be close to, effectively more of a cloud-based file system. As we've gone through the various processes, we can see that this account is now fully created. Let's go ahead and click on that, and we'll move over to the containers view. We can see that this account is entirely empty at this stage. As we click through the various tabs, we can see that the dashboard is empty and nothing has occurred in this account so far. Let's go back and move on over to Virtual Machines. I'll click on New on the bottom left, choose Virtual Machine, but I'm not going to use Quick Create this time. I'm going to use From Gallery. From Gallery allows me to specify a number of options, including the storage account in a later step. For now, I'll choose the default of Windows Server 2012 R2. I'll go ahead and hit Next. And here we can see a number of versions that we could choose from in terms of version release date. The virtual machine name needs to be specified. And here I'm going to use Dialonix East App. And we'll see if that name is unique enough. And we can see that it's slightly too long, so I'm going to change it to Dialonix app and hope that that is unique enough. I'm going to choose the standard tier, but in terms of my size, I'm going to scale this all the way down to a A2, two cores, three and a half gigs of memory. Next, I'll specify a username that needs to be something that's not common. In other words, not admin or administrator, and a non-common password as well. My passwords are good. We'll move on over to the next screen. And here I'll specify my storage account that I created in the earlier step. We can see it's a Dialonix East. We want to keep the regions the same as wherever we created our storage account. And we can see that the cloud service DNS name is unique. I'll leave everything else as is. And I'll go ahead and click on Next. I'll accept the defaults and click on Next again. Now, the Azure Fabric is going to go and create this in the background. We'll go ahead and see if we can see anything happening in the storage account so long, and for now, I'm just going to go ahead and click on Dismiss Completed. I'll move on over to Storage, and again, I'll have a look in the Storage Containers, and here we can see we have a subdirectory called VHDs that has been created. If we explore that, we can see that we have a VHD that's busy provisioning with various URLs and other things we can examine. For now, I'll just hit back and move back to virtual machines. We can see that the virtual machine has started provisioning, but I'm not able to click on it yet. And clicking on it would allow me to reconfigure the virtual machine and change the size. We can see that the state has changed to running and provisioning. And as the state changes, we can see that the bar on the bottom has also changed to give us more options. 
as the virtual machine changes through the various states of provisioning, you'll notice that this bar changes a number of times. At this point, we've got the option of connecting, but not yet to restart, shut down, or anything else, since the machine is still in the provisioning state. We can see the virtual machine has now reached the running state. We can see that there are a number of options on the bottom which have now become available. We'll go ahead and click on the arrow next to the name of the virtual machine and move over to the Configure tab. Here we can see the virtual machine size. At this stage, I'm going to drop the virtual machine size from an A2 to an A3, which is 4 cores and 7 gigs of RAM. I'll go ahead and click Save. And Azure will warn us that the machine will be restarted if it's running. I'll go ahead and confirm that by clicking on Yes. You can see that the virtual machine is now busy resizing. I'll go ahead and hit Dismiss Completed So Long. And the virtual machine will now resize for as long as it takes to resize the virtual machine. Effectively, it will be stopped. More resources will be allocated to it. And then it will be restarted again. This will be much quicker than it was in the first step where the VHD was being allocated to the virtual machine. It was being copied from one storage fabric to another storage fabric and generally a number of operations were taking place including the initial sizing of the virtual machine. We can see that the virtual machine at this stage has reached the running state and the toolbar on the bottom has the same icons available that we had previously. So this machine is now fully upgraded. We've changed it from an A2 to an A3, and we can see that by clicking on the Configure tab and seeing the current virtual machine size.